Hello, Body and Messiah. Today we're going to continue the lessons of UBP lesson series. We're going to start with lesson eight and we're going to continue with the fourth congregation of Messiah. And it is known as Thyatira. Thyatira is the fourth congregation of Messiah. We're going to read um, the scriptures involving this fourth congregation is from Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. And we're going to begin with verse 18. So as a reminder, we're going through these congregations because they are very relevant during the time in which the prophet is given these prophecies from Yeshua, where the Messiah is telling and warning these congregations about their behaviors, the attributes that he liked and he adores and loves, and also those attributes that are not desirable, that he can't stand, um, and that the congregation needs to change. So we need to look at these each congregation, including this Thyatira, the fourth congregation, and see if we carry on attributes today in the current congregations we probably are participating in, to see if we're partaking in activities that are not pleasing to Yeshua, our Savior. So let's begin in verse 18. Verse 18 reads, To the angel of Messiah's community, in Thyatira, write, Thus says the Son of God, whose eyes are like a flame of fire, and feet like polished bronze. Okay? So this lets you know um, that our Messiah is talking and letting this angel communicate to this prophet. And he's writing down these words in Revelation. So the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire and feet like polished bronze. So verse 19 says, Messiah is telling them, I know your deeds and your love and faith and service and patient endurance and that your last deeds are greater than the first so in this scripture our messiah is saying is that i know your deeds the first part of their deeds are their love and faith and the second part is their servants service and patient endurance and he says that your last deeds here the service and patient endurance are greater than your love and faith okay so this is something that our messiah is seeing that their service and their patience is greater than their love and their faith and this is something that happens in a lot of congregations often today um i try and liken it unto uh people who work at uh in cities and they are part of the dmv the department of motor vehicles the people who work amongst the Department of Motor Vehicles in big cities, you know, large cities are kind of worn down. But what they do is they're committed to their service and their patient endurance. So they're just like with an attitude of, oh, my goodness, this is a job I've been paid and hired to do. Let me just work through it. OK, so we're just going to get through the day. But their love and their faith is not that high because they're. They don't show that much love and compassion for what they're doing because they're probably worn out over time by all of the people coming through uh, with their various attitudes, good or bad. And they're just like, let's just muster out what we can to get through the day. So they're not big on their love and their faith. And this happens in a lot of congregations today. They focus a lot on their service, you know, and, and, and having conversions or having to bring people in to their denomination and their patience in trying to do so. But they don't have a lot of love for people, especially the poor, the needy, and the fatherless. And they don't have a lot of faith when it comes to the Most High God and all of the gifts and the anointings that the Most High has given to us through His Spirit, the Ruach of Elohim. So, um, these are the congregations, the attributes that they usually have. Now let's continue with verse 20. But this I have against you, 
that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Yet she is teaching and deceiving my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. So now listen, we're going to dig deeper into this verse here because our Messiah is saying that amongst this congregation who are committed to their servants, service uh, among their congregation and their patience and endurance, but they don't have as much love and faith, they tolerate this woman Jezebel. We're going to break down the characteristics and attributes of Jezebel. Okay. And He's saying that you're tolerating her. She's a trifling woman. As we know, when we look back in 1 Kings, uh, Jezebel was the queen of Israel uh, who married a king named Ahab of Israel. And she was a very trifling, hateful, uh, deceitful, demonic woman. Okay, And so we're going to break down her attributes on this side in a moment. So our Messiah is saying that you tolerate her and her teachings, which deceive his servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. You got to understand during this time period, back in the book of Revelation, during the Roman Empire, they still had the idol worship of these different gods and goddesses. And so Jezebel is likened unto uh, the worship of Diana. Basically, um, this is the carrying down of Ashura worship throughout history, the demonic worship of Ashura. And Ashura is like the wife of Baal, basically the wife of Satan. And so you'll find that Jezebel's characteristics and attributes parallels this to Ashura and who she is and all of the sexual immorality that occurred associated with the worship of Ashura and even having people to eat food sacrificed to idols. Okay. That's the setting of that time. And when we go over the attributes of Jezebel, you're going to see how her attributes parallel present day time, the whore of Babylon. Okay. We're going to go over that later. So we're going to dig deep into this scripture, but let us go on. So our Messiah is saying, I gave her time to repent of her immorality. So he's merciful enough to try and give her time to repent of her immorality. Of course, we know she's not going to, but our Messiah is giving her time. And he says, behold, I will throw her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of her doing. So it's not that she's going to repent, but our Messiah is saying those who committed adultery with her need to repent of her doings because he knows her doings are evil and that they have been deceived into engaging in this sexual immorality, this immoral behavior. So they have to repent of her doings because they've partaken in this. So like I said, this is during the time where they had all this idol worship of these goddesses and gods, and it involved committing sexual immorality. It involved uh, drinking the blood of animals and different things like that, that they were doing for worshiping all these Greek and Roman uh, gods and goddesses that they call them, like Zeus, Diana, and all. So, And he said, I'm expecting y'all to repent of her doing, because if you don't, when I throw her into a sick bed, I'm going to throw you into great tribulation. Okay. He goes on to say in verse 23, I will also strike her children with a deadly disease. Then all of Messiah's communities will know that I'm the one who searches the mind and the heart. And I will give to each of you according to your deeds. So you better watch your deeds and your behaviors as you partake in these things that are happening. And you better repent. You have to repent. If not, you're going to partake of the great tribulations as she's thrown into her sickbed. 
Now, I included a part of verse 24 because I want you to understand that in present day time, how Jezebel corresponds with the whore of Babylon. If you go back and you can read, um, look at the lesson, C-O-O-H, lesson six, part four. This gives you a summary of the C-O-O-H, come out of her, lesson six. It shows you how throughout time there has been Baal, Baal, or Baal worship, and there has been Asher worship. These are all to glorify Satan, the satanic, and the demonic. Now, in present day time, Jezebel parallels the whore of Babylon and congregations and, and different various secret organizations and even political groups partake in the sins and committing adultery and sexual immorality with the whore of Babylon. So we're going to be very fully aware because when we look in verse 24, when our Messiah is telling the people who do not hold to these teachings, they have not learned the so-called deep things of Satan. This is what he's talking about. These are these secret societies and organizations who engage in this Asherah and Baal worship and they're participating in these secret societies so-called revealing the deep things of Satan, which there is no mystery to that. So if you're partakers in this, do not be a partaker of it and repent because our Messiah is saying that he's going to have a gift to those and, and honor those who do not learn these so-called deep things of Satan. And there's a reason why they're called so-called because there's nothing deep about Satan. We already know how the story ends. We already know, according to the words of the Most High God, the plots that Satan had. And these so-called deep things are nothing but deception, witchcraft, sorcery, all these things. These so-called deep things are just things that glorify Satan. They're not, there's nothing deep about it. So you have to make your election sure and repent if you have engaged in this behavior in the past so that you will not partake of her great tribulation. Now, let's go over the attributes of Jezebel. Number one we have here, what we know about Jezebel. If we go and look in 1 Kings chapter 16, um, chapter 18, 19, 21, 22, we can read about Ahab and how Ahab and his wife Jezebel um, tried to basically destroy all of God's prophets. Okay. And the main prophet that they had a bone to pick with was Elijah. And Elijah was one of the many prophets of the most high God who destroyed all of these prophets of Baal and Asherah during Ahab and Jezebel's time. So you can go back and read first Kings chapter 16, 17, 18, 19, go read that, go through chapter 22, uh, where it talks about what goes on with Elijah and King Ahab and Jezebel. And so in the end, she had a horrible death and demise like it was prophesied because of her behavior. So let's look at her attributes. One thing we know about Jezebel, if you look in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31, that her dad, her dad was a king and his name was Ethbaal or Ethbaal which means with Baal. So her dad, who was a king over the region of Sidon, Tyre, um, was known as someone, his name literally meant with Baal. Basically, he's with on the team in the side of Satan. So that means one attribute of Jezebel is that she has no problem with the worship of Baal or Asherah. She does not, she's okay with idol worship because she comes from a household which has no problem with it. And I'm certain during the time of the Roman Empire, when these scriptures of Revelation were written, there were many women who are part of the congregation at Thyatira who called themselves prophetess, who still engaged in idol worship, in sexual immorality, in idol worship where they ate food and that was sacrificed to idols, specifically that female idol. So 
I'm pretty certain that most of these women came out of a household that had no problem with partaking of this idol worship. So what happened is the men of the congregation in Thyatira, and the reason why I'm, I'm singling out the men is because the men are the head of the household. Throughout the Torah, the men are the ones who lead the congregation. The men are the ones who lead the children of Israel. Yes, there were genuine prophetess of the Most High God, but they never dominated the men. Okay? And what the Most High, what Yeshua is pointing out, is that you're tolerating these women who are coming in here, calling themselves prophetess of the Most High God, female prophets, but they're deceiving his servants. They're deceiving his children to commit sexual immorality. So these women came along and they had no problem with engaging in this behavior of idol worship because they came from a household that had no problem with it. Now in present day time, when you look at the attributes of the whore of Babylon, specifically, um, which is associated with uh, America, there are many congregations where you have leaders who tolerate women who come in and dominate the congregation who have suspect backgrounds. And when I say suspect, I mean they openly have engaged in idol worship and they overtake the congregation with their, it's okay for us to uh, partake in these suspicious demonic things like uh, tapping into your spirit guides or listening to someone who, uh, 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 who calls themselves a psychic. I told you guys in previous lesson that there are some congregations today who entertain this type of foolishness and the Torah specifically speaks against that. So this is how we're going to go into the next attribute. Jezebel embraces the prophets of Baal and Asherah. It says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19, that they sat at her table and ate with her. And you know, all of these demonic so-called prophets of Baal and Asherah, they engaged in idol worship, sorcery, soothsaying, fortune telling, psychics, mediums. And if you read back in the Torah, in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 26, and specifically verse 31, God is speaking against this. You are not to partake in this type of evilness. Because what it does, you're entertaining demons and the demonic, okay? The demonic is a part of all this idol worship, sorcery, soothsaying, fortune telling, and psychics and mediums. A lot of people will sit there and go, well, that's a gift. This person says that they're a medium. They can talk to the dead. No, the dead really don't have no concern with what's going on today except to cry out to the Most High God about his vengeance being poured out for their blood that has been shed on this earth unjustly and unfairly. That's it. They don't call back and a person talks to them and say, you know what, I want you to know everything's okay. No, God is the only one who gives you that comfort. When you engage in these types of practices of fortune telling and psychics, what you're trying to do is you're giving power over to these satanic things to guide your life. And only the most high God is your guide. The most high God is trying to keep you from going down a path of deception. Because as we see, this people with this spirit of Jezebel will teach and deceive many of the most high God's servants. And he's trying to prevent you from being deceived. Go back and read about King Saul. King Saul in the book of Samuel. Read back on how he came to his demise and how he fell. He basically did not hear from God because he did something wrong. God said, listen, I'm going to turn my face against you. I mean, you're not going to hear from me for a while. But he was determined. So he went to a witch of Endor because he wanted her to, quote, prophesy, basically, for her to do some fortune telling on whether or not he was going to win the war. And she told him something which ultimately led to him taking his own life because he was deceived. So this is the reason why this type of practice of sorcery, soothsaying, fortune telling, psychics, and mediums is not okay with the Most High God. 
is a path of deception for the demonic to take hold of you spiritually and mentally and even physically sometimes. So do not partake of it. But when you see someone in your congregation that says it's okay, um, there are some that say it's okay for you to have a spirit guide. There's no such thing in the word of the Most High God. Only the Ruach of Elohim, the Spirit of God, will guide you and shield and protect you and show you the path you're supposed to take. Only by the Spirit, the Ruach of Elohim, the Spirit of the Most High God, has he granted us particular gifts of prophecy, gifts of speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues, so we won't be deceived. All these various gifts he's given is from his Spirit and his Spirit alone, nothing else. There are no salt so-called deep things of Satan that you can gain power from. It's only demonic deception, which will lead to your demise. So, like I said, if you look at Revelation chapter 18, verses 2 through 3 and 7 through 9, you'll see how she partakes in all this evil because she's a selfish woman, Jezebel. She's all about materialistic value and dominating it all about herself. She's very selfish. And that's how she parallels, parallels the whore of Babylon. The whore of Babylon, like I said, when you see in a lot of these congregations, they would do anything at any cost to try and entertain people in the congregation in order to gain financially. They're only concerned about financial wealth. They have moved so far away, some of these congregations, from the spiritual nature of the Most High God and those gifts that he has enriched us with in order to help the poor, the needy, the fatherless, help those who are oppressed and downtrodden, okay? Now, here's another sign about Jezebel. You'll read about her. She is hateful against the true prophets of Elohim, of the Most High God. Because she despised them. She despised them because she loves her own selfish, unrighteous will and way more than honoring the Most High God. So she is determined that whatever I say go, she doesn't care about God or honoring God or the things of the Most High God that he's laid out in the Torah. That's why she is hateful towards the prophets of the Most High God. This is why when Elijah had put to death all the prophets of Baal and Asherah after he placed before them and challenged them to call on their gods to see which God is greater, his God or theirs, in order for them to place an offering out. And these prophets of Baal and Asherah hurt themselves, hit themselves, cut themselves, crying out to their demonic gods, which never appeared in order to accept the offering. But Elijah went before the Most High humbly and said, Most High, to show them your power and show them that you are the ruler of everything and all, please accept this offering. And fire rained down from heaven and absorbed that whole offering in front of all the people. So upon that challenge that he put forth, there were like 400 prophets of Baal and like 450 prophets of Asherah or vice versa, whichever one. All these 800 people, right here who claimed that their God, their demonic God was better, were put to death after that. And after that happened, uh, King Ahab ran, going to tell his, his wife, Jezebel, and she, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 through 2, said, I'm going to put you to death, send a threat out to Elijah. She hated him because he put an end to those false prophets and prophetess. And she didn't care whether or not he was right or wrong. She was angry because it was her way or the highway. And she put out their threat to him, even though he was a true prophet of the Most High God. When you go and you look in Revelation chapter 18, verses 14, verses 20 and 24, you'll read where it speaks about the whore of Babylon, where Babylon has basically... Uh, kill the saints of the Most High God, the Kedoshim, the emissaries, the prophets, how she's done all this stuff to condemn them and destroy them. But her spirit, the whore of Babylon, parallels Jezebel. Okay? They're against the true prophets of the Most High God. 
So if there's anyone in your congregation who speaks down to those who were proven true prophets of the Most High God, then there's a problem in your congregation. Now, I'm not telling y'all to abuse this person, but call them out so that they will be cast from partaking in this behavior so they can go back and repent of their doings. Okay? Call them out. You got nothing to fear. You're on the team of the Most High God. And don't put up with that type of foolishness within your congregation. Because he said, for those who will not repent of her doings, he's going to bring them into great tribulation. <laughs> Come on, body of the side. Pay attention to the status of where America is when we think about it paralleling the whore of Babylon and then Jezebel. Okay? Systemic oppression and different things. All right, let's go to attribute number four. Jezebel used wicked deception in order to falsely accuse someone to take their property. Now her husband Ahab came whining to her because this particular man of Israel named Naboth, N-A-B-O-T-H. You can read it in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 11 to the end. But he wanted his vineyard. So Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. And their brother was like, no, I'm keeping it. This is my property. Basically, you know, I, I built this vineyard up and, and put time and invested in it. No, I don't care what money you're offering me. This is my vineyard. So he went because he already had a bad, basically a, a prophet to tell him something, how God was going to judge him, Ahab. And then he went to try and get, ask Naboth for his vineyard. And then Naboth said, no. And then his little feelings was hurt once again. So he goes and cries to Jezebel. And so Jezebel, you know, basically going to try and, and, and um, gird up her husband with deception and evilness, said, watch, you're going to get your vineyard. So she had some people bear false witness against Nabal, saying that he cursed the Most High God and that he cursed the king. And the people stoned him to death. That's how she got her husband to own his vineyard, through wicked deception. God is not pleased with this because he's going to judge her for that. And he did judge her for that when you go on and read in 1 Kings, how um, there was prophecy given over her death and how horribly she was going to die and the dogs were going to lap up her blood and eat her flesh. And even her children had to die a horrible death. And the reason why, one of the main reasons why, because of her evil deception against uh, Nabal. She was wrong in what she did. Now, when we look at Jezebel, and like I said, present day time, well, if we look in during Roman time, the Roman Empire, they did such evil, wicked, deceptive things in order to cast down, dehumanize, and oppress the children of the Most High God the black and brown Hebrews during that time to oppress them and to try and push them into immorality and to idol worship. And they would falsely accuse them and even have them stoned to death by sometimes their own people because of their deception. And as I mentioned before with the Roman empire, they even placed in a rule to say that the men were not allowed. They were supposed to take a vow of celibacy in order for them because of their greed. Once that priest died, they just wanted to own all their property and gain more wealth, the selfishness and the deception. When that type of a vow of celibacy is nowhere in the word of God, that destroys man, that destroys his spirit. When you go on and you look in Revelation chapter 18, verses 4 through 7, you'll see because of her wickedness, the whore of Babylon, that she's very selfish. And that she's all about self-indulgence, her own gain, and, and partaking in luxuries. But these luxuries have been partaken of at the hand of people who were oppressed, who were beaten, slaughtered, killed, forced to work for free because of free labor. All this wickedness. Uh, the Native Americans, like I said, if you go look at uh, the lesson that deals with biblical racial reconciliation, stop whitewashing descendants of Ham. 
those black and brown Hebrews who were Native Americans. There's an attachment in the description of that video that shows you actually who those people are. And they're also descendants of Africans. And these folks' land were just taken. They were robbed of it. Um, it was taken from them. Uh, America and the American leadership would put fake treaties out to the Native Americans and then lie about it. Go back and still slaughter them and take their land. This is the same type of behavior. Now, in your congregation, if you have someone in there that is dominating and, and let me just correct myself a little bit i keep pointing towards a person having the spirit of jezebel as being just only women but trust and believe from some of the things i've seen nowadays there are some feminine acting men that dwell within these congregations and they behave just like jezebel when they feel like they need to dominate and they need to dominate this congregation and they have feminine ways now they partake in these type of wicked deceptions also because they want to dominate and have the attention uh, uh, of everyone in the congregation over a person who is a true prophet or prophetess of the Most High God. When you see this type of behavior, and if you catch someone bearing false witness in this manner, call them out so that they may repent of their immorality and repent of their wrongdoing. Bottom line, you cannot tolerate this. There's genuine judgment behind this. And even when we look now, when it talks about Jezebel will be thrown into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. There is tribulation happening right now. And so it's going to continue to intensify because of the judgments that are falling because of how the emissaries, the Kedoshim, the children of the Most High God have been mistreated. Don't partake of this. So a good way to not partake of this is that within your own congregation, call out that type of behavior. You have to be strong enough to do that. Now, as we move on, we're going to read the rest of Revelations chapter um, 2, and we're going to go with verse 24. Our Messiah told the people, but to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching and have not learned the so-called deep things of Satan, I place on you no burden, no burden at all. Okay. Only hold firm to what you have until I come. This is what the Messiah is telling those who have not fallen into this deception of Jezebel these so-called deep things of Satan. To the one who overcomes and guards my deeds, that's doing righteous things and guarding the righteous ways of the Most High God, until the end, I will give him authority over the nations. Basically, he's going to grant you power because you've proven yourself righteous by guarding over the righteousness of the Most High God and his, the righteousness of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. You've overcome and guarded over his deeds. So he's going to grant authority to those over the nations. Basically because you judge righteously and you're doing what's righteous. And he shall rule them with an iron rod as when clay pots are broken into pieces. So he's granting them authority to rule over them, meaning the nations. I'm pretty sure the nations of those that are wicked and evil to rule over them with an iron rod as if they were clay pots that could be broken into pieces. Even as I received from my father, Adonai Elohim, Messiah saying, so will I give him the morning star. And to me, the morning star represents something that's brilliant. Uh, some people may feel that it represents an actual star or constellation or uh, a planet maybe, but I believe it means something deeper. He will give him the morning star, power to rule over those things that are evil and to destroy them and rout them out. Power because you're ruling righteously and you're following along the standards and the commands of the Most High God, that type of power to where you will shine as a bright light uh, 
as a ruler of justice, equality, uh, taking care of the poor and the needy and the fatherless, that you're going to be given this authority and this strength, the power. God, Yeshua is going to give them the morning star, just like he received such power from his heavenly Abba. So, body of Messiah, I hope that um, you can glean from this lesson and, and, and learn the ways of righteousness and make sure that you're not partaking of these attributes of Jezebel or the whore of Babylon. Make sure we guard against these particular things because we submit ourselves wholeheartedly to the Most High God. We thank Him for the salvation that we've been given through the sacrifice of His Son, Yeshua, and we forever have to war against those evil things. So be strong. Some people may not even realize that they're partaking in this type of behavior. Some people may not even know enough of the word to know that in Leviticus chapter 19, all of these rules and standards against engaging in such, such type of evil uh, practices such as soothsaying, fortune telling, and psychics and mediums. So teach them the truth so that they'll be forewarned in the latter days. God does not want anyone to perish. He wants to give everyone an opportunity. So be a part of that positive change, I pray. Well, Body Messiah, this is the end of Lesson 8, and then I hope and pray that you've enjoyed it. And as I always say to you, may Adonai Elohim cover and surround you, shield and protect you and your family with his shalom peace. Goodbye.